Representative Leslie Herod, thank you for joining us. We'd like to begin by allowing you to introduce yourself to the voters and in 30 seconds, tell them your story. Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm State Representative Leslie Herod. I'm proud to represent uh, House District 8 in Central and Northeast Denver um, on the east side. Uh, I actually was born in Germany. I grew up all around the world. My mom served in the armed forces and I'm so lucky that she retired right here in Colorado. I went to school in Boulder and quickly came down to Denver and found my home. Uh, I'm running for mayor of Denver because we are at a crossroads. The city that I know and love is shifting and changing and I know Denver is ready to tackle its toughest challenges. Our first question. Insiders tell us the four most important issues in this race are crime, homelessness, housing, and transportation. Mm -hmm. Rank them from most important to least important mm. and please explain why. Yeah, that's a tough question um, because those kind of top issues are ones that everyone in Denver is talking about. I have talked to countless Denverites, thousands of Denverites, and asked them specifically, what issues are important to you? Um, what issues should the mayor be prioritizing? And it has been affordability, affordable housing, particularly um, homelessness. So let, me, let me just stop you. I, I want to know what your priorities are. Yeah. Not, not what you... We'll go in that order. Okay, good. Affordability, good. you okay. know, if you can't afford to live here, can't stay here. Too many people are being pushed out and priced out of our city. Um, but it does feed into the homelessness crisis, which is one and two. You know, we've got to make sure that our unhoused neighbors are housed. And that also leads into that feeling of safety and making sure that Denver continues to be a safe city and quite frankly goes back to being one of the safest cities in the nation. Those are the top three issues. I think when you think about the other issues, public transportation, environmental concerns, those all feel secondary because the top three issues are so pressing today. So follow up on, on what you've said. If uh, the affordability of housing is your number one issue, um, What's your pledge to voters on how you will address it and how might that be different than the other candidates on this ballot? Yeah, well, one, I think it's important to level set a little bit. People don't realize that Denver, RTD and DPS own the majority of the vacant lots in Denver. We can actually build on the land that we own and we can do it in a way that is fitting for each and every neighborhood where those lots exist. That is our priority and it's where we should start. Denver is a quite innovative city. We've done this before with National Western. We bought land up at Red Rocks because we wanted an amphitheater. We even bought Winter Park because we wanted a place to ski. Why not use our own land to tackle our toughest challenge today, which is that affordability crisis. That's the first thing we'll do. Like many cities, Denver has financial needs. If elected, what would you prioritize financially and where might you trim? Yeah, I think it's important that we focus on that affordability crisis. We also have to make sure that we're funding a response to homelessness, you know, to our unhoused crisis. We've got to get people into homes and we've got to fund mental health and substance misuse programs for them. I think that's a priority. But additionally, we've got to prioritize making sure that our city employees are well resourced, well funded, and that we actually fill those vacancies that are existing within each department. You know, we can't really tackle some of our toughest issues if we don't have the good men, women and people who are making up the city employees of this city, but they are feeling stretched. They're feeling stretched and we've got to make sure that we reprioritize those funds to make sure that those departments are full. We did it at the state level. We've gone back to pre-pandemic levels when it comes to employment. We can do the same for the city. Kind of on that same issue, Denver, as you know, is a wonderfully diverse city. Yeah. If you're elected by the voters of the city, will you make a commitment to make sure that your administration reflects this diversity? And if yes, how? Well, I believe that we can um, we can actually reflect more than the actual numbers of the city. We can reflect the diversity that I think the city um, aspires to be. You know, I believe we could have a more diverse administration than we've seen in the past. That is in race, sexual orientation, gender, yes. But it's also in diversity of thought, background, experience, you know. I think all of that is important. We are facing a crossroads again in this city. And if we don't have folks who are willing to put results over politics in these positions, we won't pass our toughest hurdles. And I know we can do that. City Council has the potential for a significant change in mm. this election. Again, if you're elected by the people of Denver, how are you planning to work with this new council? And what would that relationship look like? 
Well, I look forward to um, working with council directly, all of the new members and the returning members. One thing that I want to make sure that we do is um, make sure they're a part of the process here. We have a strong mayor. That's not questionable. Um, it's not in question. We know that we have a strong mayor system right here in Denver. Um, but that does not mean that we shouldn't work arm in arm with city council. City council is the closest to the people of their districts and the folks that they represent. There's no reason why they shouldn't be able to also deliver for their people, for their constituents. Right now, there seems to be a wall up. And I want to break that down and make sure that we're delivering for those people. An opportunity for you now. If you could ask one other candidate, there's 16 other names on this ballot other than yours. If you could ask one other candidate one question, which candidate and what is that question? Mm. And that it's is... okay to think because <laughs> everybody else that sat in the chair has had that same look. One question, one candidate, who's the question, or who's the candidate and what is the question? Mm -hmm. You know, I have very much appreciated um, the alignment that I have seen with a lot of the folks on that stage, a lot of the candidates running for mayor. Clearly, they are also listening to the people of Denver. Um, I think if I had one candidate, it'd be a lot of the candidates, but the candidates that are looking uh, to really think about getting our I'm um, press you a little bit because everybody's tried that, <laughs> and I'm pushing back with everyone to choose one candidate and one question because I think it's really telling to the voters. So. There's got to be somebody else on this ballot that you'd like to ask a question to. Yeah. Which candidate and what is the question? You know, I'm going to, okay, then I'll step back and I will say Ian Tafoya. My question for Ian uh, is, what more can we do in Denver to ensure that we are the greenest city in this nation? Ian has done amazing work on, um, on greening Colorado and Denver. I know he's got some amazing ideas and I look forward to working with him on them. This is a chance to get to know you outside of the political arena. Mm. What's the last book you read and why? Mm -hmm. And what do you do for fun? <laughs> well, I'll start by saying uh, what I do for fun is in the arts, arts and entertainment. I love to be out in community. Give me a live concert, you know, just take me to uh, a DJ or an art opening. I actually serve on the board for the Museum of Contemporary Arts. The creatives are actually powering our city and I sometimes think they don't get enough credit. So get me into any type of cultural event and I will be there uh, and I'll have a lot of fun with it. Cleo Parker, Robinson Dance, I can name them all. Um, it, it is part of who we are as Denver and it's a part of what brings us together and closer as Denver is our arts and culture scene. Um, and so that's, that's my favorite. My last book I read, actually, I'm going to cheat a little bit because it's a screenplay. Uh, it's called Elevation. And I've been working a lot to bring the film industry to Colorado and to Denver. Uh, and there is a screenplay I just read called Elevation that uh, has actually uh, wrapped here in Colorado. And I look forward to uh, that movie hitting the silver screen in just a, just a few months. Okay. And in conclusion, you've got about a minute back at the voters here and, and tell them what they need to know about you as they're making this decision for Denver's next mayor. Yeah. Well, first, I uh, appreciate the opportunity and the engagement. I know that you all have uh, a lot of options in front of you when it comes to the next mayor. Um, I do believe that I, I will lead the city and will be uh, a great mayor for the city, particularly because of the work that I've done. You know, I passed over 150 pieces of legislation into law right here in Colorado. But that doesn't matter as much as the results. You know, in Colorado, we've been able to do a lot and deliver for Denverites passing Caring for Denver, making sure that STAR, support team assisted response, an alternative to police, an alternative 911 response is implemented here and it's saving lives. You all deserve a mayor who is gonna be as passionate about this city as you are, but one who also will take those creative solutions and bring them to the table. Uh, and quite frankly, that's what I'm about. Don't let anyone, anyone tell you that a solution can't be met here in Denver because we know that it can. If we have any mayoral candidates that say that your dreams or your hopes for the city are pipe dreams, I don't believe they deserve to be in consideration. I know that we can tackle our toughest issues and I know Denver is ready to do it together. Representative Leslie Herod, thank you for your answers. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank Good you, luck. appreciate it, thanks.